Hello and welcome to Sunnyside Crochet. Sorry about my absence, but I recently moved into a new place. Exciting, I know. So we're going to take a little time and work on some home projects to celebrate me getting into a new place. So today I am making a cover for this canister. I decided it was the perfect size to hold kitchen utensils. But, you know, it, it needed to be a little dressier. So we're just going to reuse this container to make a unique holder for my cooking utensils. So you can even take an old soup can and give it the same kind of treatment to hold pens, pencils, or even crafting supplies. Um, it works out pretty well. So these projects are great ideas to also hold utensils for summer parties. So we are going to actually start this project with a circle like we did in our last video. And all I did was I started with six stitches in the first row and I actually worked out to eight rows because it was just as big as the small as the bottom of the container and I wanted it to be a little bit snug so that it wouldn't just slide off of my container. So I do have a link in the description to get you started with your circle. So let's get started beyond that. So like I said, I did eight rows. So that means six times eight is 48. We have 48 stitches in this outside row, which for this pattern and the stitch I'm using, all we need is an even number. So we got it. So for this first row, we are just going to single crochet all the way around to get started up the side. And I love the set of stitches I chose to make this because it gives a little bit of texture to it, makes it a little more interesting. And I also used the same stitches for my niece's Easter baskets, just for that little bit of texture. And they love them. I also added flowers to them, which I will have a link to that video as well in the description because I'm adding flowers to this one too. I love it. All right, and we will slip stitch in that first chain we did to start the row. Okay, now we are ready to start the sides with our texture. So what we're gonna do is we're going to chain one to start the row, and that is our first stitch, and we're just going to count it just like a single crochet. So we will actually put our hook around the next stitch and do a double crochet. And then in the following stitch, which is actually in this space right next to where we just did the double crochet, we're going to do a single crochet. And then double crochet again, single crochet. Now this first row is a little bit tricky as you're establishing the pattern for this, but once you have it, the rest of this project is a breeze. And I just love the texture on this. I'm gonna have to use it elsewhere too. 
Okay, I'm not gonna lie, I already have projects lined up for it because I just love the texture. Right, and here we are coming down to the end. Single crochet, double crochet in this last stitch. Okay, and we're gonna slip stitch in that first chain. Okay, row two is a little more interesting than row one. So to start it, we are going to chain one and then we are going to do our double crochet in that first stitch that we're already working in to establish the pattern for row two because it's in every other pattern. I'm doing a double crochet in the single crochets and then doing a single crochet in the top of the double crochets from the last row. Just like that. The end of row two, single crochet in that last one. All right, and to finish this row, we're actually going to slip stitch in the top stitch from that double crochet, not in the chain to start the row to keep our stitches right. And then to start row three, you'll just chain one and keep going in our pattern. You'll start with a double crochet there, single crochet, and work all the way around. And then I turn it this way so that this really neat texture is on the outside. So as you keep going, you will end up with something resembling this. And if your container is totally even on the top, doesn't have any kind of indent coming into it, then you're fine. But my container is an old plastic jar and it does come in a little bit for the threads on the jar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my kind of basket looking thing here that I made and I am going to bring in the top a little bit and we'll secure it all with a button so that we can get it on and off of our container easily. All right, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to put my container on its side 
And I'm actually gonna start next to my seam here so we can end in the seam. Okay. So we'll start, I'm just going to single crochet all the way around. So it's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and here we'll single crochet two together. And we're just gonna work in the front loops so you don't notice it. Sixteen. All right. And I'm only gonna bring it in three stitches. So it didn't need to come in much, just, just a little bit. And 48 divided by three is 16, so that's where I came up with that number. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and again two together, front loop only. And you can't really do a front loop only on this one, so we're just going to go through the whole thing. It's alright. 16. Alright, so then we're going to chain one and go back the other way. So we have that little opening. Chain one, and we're just gonna do two more rows of the brown, and that should bring me to the top of my canister, and I will show you how we're going to put the button on. Okay, now that we have finished our four rows of brown, I'm going to pick a button. Now I had these little wooden buttons just kind of laying around, so I'm going to use one of them. But you can use anything you want. You can use a decorative button if you really, really want to, and then attach a flower, you know, somewhere near here, and you can use a little bee and then put a flower there. I might have to do that. So, we'll take a little bit of thread and attach our button right there. If 
I can pick up my needle. There we go. Okay, now that we have our button attached, we can get a better idea of how long to make our chain to fit around our button. So, I'll start with four and see how that works. That's actually not bad. So we'll do four, and then we're just going to insert our hook into that first stitch we did, and do a slip stitch, and tie off. Ta-da! And we have a working button. So it's also a great trick for like clothing and other projects that you may have using buttons in there. So we'll put it on our canister and admire our handiwork. And I did add a applique flower to my canister because I just love the way they turned out. I thought they were really, really cute, and I'm going to make a garland out of them because April showers bring May flowers, and I am ready for the flowers. So, I hope you enjoyed our tutorial today. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook and Pinterest. Have a great day, and as always, happy hooking!